Hi, and welcome to part five and the final part in the beginner tutorial series in how to create an original pop song using Reaper. Throughout this series, we've explored recording live instruments, recording virtual instruments, adding effects and basic mixing techniques. Throughout this video, we will continue adding effects throughout all the instruments, ensure that the final project is mixed, and explore all the different options for rendering your track to different formats. Before we start, make sure that you have a firm idea of how you'd like the instruments to sound individually and how you'd like the overall project to sound. Have your reference song close by. When you're listening to your reference song, think about how far away the instrument sounds. By using reverb, you can employ the proximity effect. More reverb will result in you feeling as though the instrument is further away, and less reverb will make it feel like the instrument is closer to your ears. Go easy with that in reverb, you don't want it to sound echoey. Also, in terms of adding compression to your track, we won't be adding compression to all of the tracks, because we don't want that over-compressed robotic sound. So the only instruments that will end up being compressed are those that need to be controlled and have a level sound across the entire track. For example, the drums, the bass, and the vocals. All other instruments do not need to be compressed. And that way they will keep some of their human qualities. Okay, let's begin. In the last video, we applied effects to the vocal track Let's have a look at the bass guitar now. We need the bass to be consistent and controlled. So we need to compress the sound, then apply EQ. We won't be applying an, a wet track to the bass guitar. So let's start by clicking on effects on the bass guitar and click on compressor. Isolate the track by pressing solo so that we can hear. And experiment with the presets. Apply auto makeup so that the sound comes back up to the original volume. Experiment with the different uh, presets. And once you've found something that you really, really like, um, for example, I really like the driving rock bass, then mix back in the rest of the instruments and listen to the track as a whole. Many memories through the years still look up to you Looking different when Okay, you may need to go back in and change some of the program commands, so be aware that that might happen. Keep w working your way between each effect. Alright, let's also EQ the bass by clicking on the effects and adding the EQ. Again, start with the presets and isolate the bass and listen to it as a, as a solo instrument. looking at what kind of microphones are being used or what kind of amplifiers. So we're going to select perhaps the rock bass. You can see how we're taking out some of the bass uh, frequencies, boosting some of the mids, taking out some of the treble and boosting some of this bass here. Let's have a listen to it. Take out some more if you like by moving these uh, markers. So that works quite well for me. So now let's mix in the rest of the instruments. Many memories through the years still look up to you. Okay, so once you 
have experimented and you're really, really happy with what you've got, next move on to the drum kit and you're going to approach the drum kit in the exact same way. So head up to the drums, click on effects, and we're gonna add, starting with compressor. So add that compressor, isolate the drums, and choose which drum kit you'd like. And just keep experimenting until you've got something that you like. Now to add some EQ on the drum kit. So click on effects again, add, and Reaper EQ there. So again, isolate the drums, then mix the drums in while experimenting with the presets. So as you can see, you've got some basic ones, and then you've got some that actually say cymbals, kick, rock, bass, snare, um, for each of the drum kit areas. You can actually have different parts of the MIDI drum kit on different tracks and mix each of them separately, just like in a real recording setting where you'd have a different microphone on different parts of the drum kit. So let's uh, start the play. Many memories through the years still look up to you Looking different ways and never quite close And once you've experimented, make sure you keep checking it and of course make sure you hit save as well. There's a common misconception about using presets and it being the cheetah's way out. Honestly, they are a great place to start, not just for beginners, but also to give you a graphic representation of what each preset is affecting. It can also help you achieve the overall sound that your reference song is using. All right, time for each of the keyboard layers. These are going to sit at the back of the mix, so I'm going to bust each of them to another track and apply a small amount of reverb to the piano a little bit more for the strings and a bit more for the organ and keep the solo passage without reverb as I want the solo to be more present. So to bus, add a new track to each of the keyboard layers. So again, select your keyboard layer. So start with piano and then control T to add a track next to it. Name that track Piano Wet. Do the same next to the organ. So select and then control T. Name that track Organ Wet. Same for strings. Select control T. Name it Strings Wet. Next, to tell each of the tracks to actually bust to these uh, extra tracks. So, so click on Piano, click on the I.O. And we're going to add a new send to Piano Wet. We want it pre-effects. Do the same for Organ. So click on the I.O., add a new send. We're sending it to Organ Wet. And we're doing it pre-effects. Do the same for strings, I.O., add a new send, strings wet, prefix. Okay, beginning with the piano track, click on the wet, and we're gonna add some reverb. Because we want the piano to sound a little bit further away than the vocals, so we're gonna add just a little bit of reverb. So nice. Okay, let's listen to it. So it'll just add a nice little bit of sustain. Once you're happy, uh, do the same for each of these uh, wet tracks. So we're gonna now do the organ, 
We don't want too much on the organ. So add effects and we want reverb. So this one's gonna have a little bit more crunch, a little less wet. <laughs> Do the same for the strings. Strings are gonna have a nice, nice amount on there. Don't forget that while listening to all of this, it's really important to take a break to avoid getting uh, fatigued. So now it's time to look at the EQ for each of these keyboard parts. So let's click on the effects on the original track and we're gonna add some effects to the piano. So, just some EQ, we, we are not going to compress the keyboard track. So let's click on EQ. And let's have a look while listening. Let's make sure it's somewhere where the piano is playing. And make your selections. same for each of the keyboard instruments so going to your original track add EQ choose a preset and make sure you're listening to it as you are making any changes And down here you can actually see a representation of what it is that you're changing, the frequency, the gain and the bandwidth. So once you've made your selections for all of your EQ, keep listening, keep experimenting. Once you've applied the effects and you've reached a point where you're not quite sure of what else to do, or maybe you think your song is ready for others to listen to, it's time for exporting. Depending on where you'll be delivering your song, there are a variety of export options. YouTube, for example, will compress your song further. So that is something to keep in mind while mixing. The main export options are MP3 for playing on smartphones or portable music players. WAV file, which is a larger and higher quality file type, and FLAC, an even higher quality and larger file format. The most common is MP3, so let's export our file as a high quality MP3 file. Okay, so select your entire project by clicking and dragging across your timeline. Next go to File and select Render. Here choose Master Mix, which will be, like I said earlier, rendering your master mix, so everywhere where your panning functions are, uh, it will mix that. So here's a chance to make sure that you haven't made any mistakes with your render. So make sure that all of your panning functions are exactly the same. Make sure that your wet tracks remain the same as your dry tracks. And then head back into the render settings. So master mix is what you want to render. This will also affect the volumes that you have things set at, as well as the program command volumes. All right, the render bounds, how much is it going to render? Oops. And you want that to be the time selection, which is what we've just selected um, in, on the timeline. Next, you need to name it something. So name it the name of your song. Mine's called Ripples and choose where it's going to be rendered to. So you can actually choose the directory. I'm going to keep it my original project file, uh, project folder. And then you get to choose what type of format you'll actually render it to. So here you wanna select MP3. 
being the most commonly used. And then choose the maximum bitrate quality. Once you've done that, you can actually click render one file. And up it will render. It'll take a little bit of time and then it will close when finished. Once it has rendered, save your project and exit Reaper. You can already see that the audio file is quite soft, so extra boosting might need to be added to the entire master mix. You can now test the file in a range of media players on your computer. Also on your car stereo, on your smartphone using headphones. As you're listening, keep a pen and paper close by and make notes on things you'd like to change or improve. Then head back into Reaper and continue making those changes and render the project again. Test it constantly. You may have to do this several times before the track is actually ready for other people to listen to. Keep doing this until you feel confident and ready to show someone else. And remember, if you're stuck, Sometimes it's good to show a mentor earlier rather than later, as they can help you complete the project successfully. At the end of the day though, it's your music, and if you've created the sound that you want and you're really happy with it, then nothing else really matters. I hope throughout this series of creating a pop song demo in Reaper has helped you become more confident with using music technology to record your own music compositions and that you've all enjoyed the process. So stay creative, enjoy the process, and continue experimenting. See you all next time.